welcome back to another John Giants Overtime episode. It's the first night of September, which means school year, football season, and the end of summer Fridays are upon us. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and leave a comment talking about your favorite thing in the video, and even a comment talking about the thing I can improve on most in these videos. Please check out the Fresh Focus channel and store at freshfocus.store. And our merch store, which is in the which the link is in the description. Check out our shorts channel for all kinds of stuff, from short sports videos to making office crossbows. Without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, like I said, the first night of September. It's almost 9 p.m. And earlier today, I had some quite interesting news. After some questionable cuts and after some questionable cuts from the Giants, cutting from 80 to 53 men for their roster, they have made another very interesting cut. When they already had 53, the Giants earlier today have waived, released, cut, whatever word you want to use. They have, in my word, in my words, they have cut Blake Martinez. Their starting middle linebacker coming back from ACL, who had a ton of tackles in 2020, ACL tear earlier in the last in last season, and yeah, now it's 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 a tight room now. Austin Calitro was Austin Calitro and Tay Crowder. I'm think I'm thinking are going to be the guys. Maybe some rookies, other players, but point being. Blake Martinez has been cut, and after they reworked his contract, he has one year left. I figured, let it ride, just let him just benefit from the good tackles and good middle linebacker play while he got it. But I guess, uh, guess they don't want to do that. So yeah, Blake Martinez cut by the Giants. My thoughts on that, like I said, I, I figured if, if you're gonna rework his contract. I, I guess they just reworked it to cut him so they wouldn't take the contract penalty, which I think is a little bit messed up. I, I mean, obviously, that's what they would need to do if they needed to cut him. They'd need to rework it. But to rework a contract, to get us to the point where you're telling the guy, hey, look, we want to keep you around, but we just don't got the money right now, so let's work around this contract to get the best thing for us. And so we can keep you around, then you're going to cut them before week one. It's kind of messed up. I ain't going to lie. Um, the 11th is the first game of the year. Not a great date for a football game. I'm just going to say that open right. Um, it's not a great date. So if I reference that date, please don't get mad at me. I'm not saying anything to demean on that date or what happened there. I'm not going to comment on that. Anyway, point being, Giants Cup Blake Martinez. Interesting move. While they already have 52, they they have 53. They're now down to 52, assuming they don't add somebody else from their practice squad and then get somebody else off of waivers. Okay, I've just been informed that the Giants have claimed Tyree Phillips, an offensive lineman, tackle, or guard, you can, you can decide, off of the Baltimore waiver list, and he will be the 53rd man on this roster. And I must say, I'm not liking the move that much because whether Blake Martinez was like it or not, whether he'll be like that or not, he's always going to be a, a dependable middle linebacker. At least you'd think that because based on what he's done in the past. And you've recently reworked his contract to the point where he's not really costing you much. But they cut him, and I figured, which I was about to say before I got the Tyree Phillips news, I figured they'd make a move, maybe at middle linebacker, cornerback, maybe D-line, or uh, I didn't really think O-line much, but maybe D-line, middle linebacker, quarterback, they'd make a move there. Maybe signing some players, just clearing up a, a, a just enough cap space, with, and I figured that was probably the thing they were doing, but I, I guess not. Think about Tyree Phillips. From my knowledge of him, he's played 22 NFL games for Baltimore. He was a third-round draft pick. I think he started 13 or 14 of them. Basically, um, yeah, he had, he had a few injuries, knee injuries. He was placed on IR a few times. That degenerative knee, I, I just don't really like the pick much because 
If it, uh, it's kind of like the jo Jordan Montgomery trade with the, with the Yankees. You're trading for somebody who has potential who has played decently, but you're trading for a guy who's probably not going to play that much for you. Like the Yankees traded Jordan Money, Jordan Money. I'm gonna say Money for Harrison Bader or Bader. If you want to say that? And he's in a boot for the rest of the year. He won't play for the Yankees. Same thing with Tyree Phillips. He 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 might play, but how much? I I have a hard time thinking he'll start over Andrew Thomas or Evan Neal, and he's predominantly a tackle. Maybe you can play him at guard over Shane Lemieux. Or Josh Azudu, or well, Shane Lemieux is injured, so Josh Azudu. You'd figure that, but he's no better than Josh Azudu. Josh Azudu is a rookie third round pick. He's a two or three year third round pick who is shown to have degenerative knee issues and hasn't really played the greatest. I figure it's better to play Josh Azudu in that situation because, I mean, yeah. Why not play your rookie who has too much to prove and you need. In a rebuilding season, you need to figure stuff out. But if he is a guy that you can play at guard in the future, why not play him over Tyree Phillips? And if they are going to play him, why get Tyree Phillips off of waivers? There are too many good players on waivers to pick other than Tyree Phillips. That's all I'm saying. All right. The point I was going to make before the Tyree Phillips news, which still might be true, is cutting a guy like Blake Martinez is sending a sign. That can be one of two. There can be one of two signs. A, you a you're trying to say, hey, we're serious about this rebuild. Anybody who's not going to bring value to us in the future, we don't really want right now. And that's a and that's a bold move. Even though they have somebody like Sterling Shepard still on the roster, and they have Darius Slayton, who they probably won't resign if he stays at all. They got players like that on this roster who are. Probably going to be here, this might be the last year that you see them in a Giants uniform or any uniform at all. You got players like them on the team, but then you cut somebody like Blake Martinez. Or the second, more believable sign that I thought they were showing is, we're cutting players because we need some cap to bring in something big. Something big that will synergize this offense or defense. And that's what I thought they were going to do until Tyree Phillips, which this still might happen because, I mean, you never know. They can always cut somebody else. Slayton's still on the team. They cut Blake Martinez when nobody expected them to. So right now, any anyone, I mean, when Dable and Shane said it's a com it's it's competition now, anyone can get cut. They meant it, I guess. Point being, someone like Roquan Smith, who wants out of Chicago, who wants a trade, you just dropped a middle linebacker and Blake Martinez. Picking somebody up like Roquan Smith would be kind of good. I don't think it's gonna happen. Or maybe someone like him. Maybe you sign somebody like Anthony Hitchens if we're out of free agency, or I think he might have been signed already. Maybe you maybe you sign Odell. I, they're not gonna. I don't. I don't see much of a reason to sign Odell. I'd like it, but Odell. I don't think he has much of a reason to come back to New York. The only reason is nostalgia at that point. He he's still recovering from that ACL tear. He won't be back till at least October. Maybe late September at the best. He's going to be a pretty good receiver for, for one year until you're in your cap prices again where you got to pay Kenny Galladay, you got to get rid of players just to re-sign Odell, who might not be worth the money that he, he's going to demand. So maybe they don't sign Odell, maybe they do, but maybe they get somebody completely different from Roquan Smith or Odell. Maybe they just sign a tight end or something. Point being, the, my main goal was for them to look at getting a good player, a future star who can really synergize the team now and be a key factor in our rebuild. Because right now, I mean, who we got? That's going to be a star for the future, a key factor in this rebuild. You got Xavier McKinney. I can't say Barkley confidently because I don't know if they're going to re-sign him. Definitely can't say Jones. They got Tyrod Taylor for another year at least, so I figure... If they don't want to draft a quarterback in this year, or if they keep, or if they get rid of Jones, Tyrod Taylor is going to be their starter next year at least. I think that's the case. But I mean, you don't really have anybody who's going to be an anchor other than Kadarius Tony, maybe Wandale Robinson, possibly. Not, I have a hard time seeing that, and Xavier McKinney. I think it's going to be Xavier McKinney and Kadarius Tony who are going to be the key factors for the future. 
I think they have a lot of talent. If they stay healthy and on the field, then they're they're going to be the two guys who synergize the offense and defense. But that's going to take a while, so it's a process, and we're going to have to, us Giants fans are going to have to wait through that process. As much as I don't want to, we got to be patient for once. I know it's not in New York fans' blood, but patience is a key. Okay, on to season talk. This season, I'm going to be looking up a while because there's a schedule above me that I'm looking at for the Giants. So basically, looking up there, I'm going to be looking a lot, a lot like this. Basically, from what I see in the new Giants schedule, the first eight weeks, that let's say nine for the bye week, first nine weeks, I see the Giants being six and four t at the best case scenario. Maybe we steal an extra game. Maybe we're higher. I, I assume we're probably going to be lower. But looking at the opponents we face, we're not really facing many powerhouses. The only two powerhouses we're facing are, are Green Bay and Tennessee. Maybe you can count Baltimore in that instant. I don't really know if I'd count Baltimore. Baltimore can probably beat us, but they're not a powerhouse. So, that, so that's three teams that, you, that, we probably, that we are most likely going to lose to. If you want to count Dallas in that total, that's four teams. Carolina, we can beat Carolina. CMC is most likely going to get injured week one or week two. He might get injured against us. He might not. He might light us up. But I see us being able to beat Carolina because they don't have great receivers. They don't have the greatest defense. I, I see us being able to beat Carolina because because Carolina we we have good good enough success against them. We just can't really finish games. But even if we lose to Carolina, I mean Chicago. Who, who thinks we're losing to Chicago? Chicago is probably in a worse rebuilding stage than us. That's saying a lot. But look into the camera. That's saying so much to say Chicago is in a worse re rebuilding stage than us. A lot. And let me see. Jacksonville and Seattle. I mean, I mean what are we looking at here? J Jacksonville? J Jack they won one game last year. C Seattle. Seattle. They don't have a quarterback. They got Drew Locke or, or, or Geno Smith. If we lose to Geno Smith. I won't, I won't watch another game. If we lose badly to Geno Smith, we might lose. We might just lose to Geno Smith because of DK Metcalf and all that. But if we lose badly to Geno Smith, like if Geno Smith lights up the Giants' defense, voice crack, if he lights up the Giants' defense, I'm not watching another game this season. I'll, I'll look at the summaries. I'll look at the scores. I'll look at the box scores. I'm not watching a game live another season if Geno Smith lights us up. And you can, and you can, and I will put, I will quote that. I'll put that on my channel banner. I will not watch another Giants game live if Geno Smith lights us up. And if he does, and I don't watch another game, then that's the end of the overtime series because I'm not reporting on games that I watch live because I'm not watching another game live if Geno Smith lights us up. No, I'm not doing it. Sorry, I, I got a little carried away there. Basically, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A little carried away with the Geno Smith talk because he played for us. Basically, I think we can be six and four at, at the bye week, maybe five and five. And at that point, we're a competing team. We're competing with some of the wild card teams, some of the better wild card teams. Looking at week ten, the Texans, they, they don't really have good, that good of a team. Their best players are Laramie Tunsil and Brandon Cooks. Not that great. Week eleven, the Lions. The Lions won like three games last year, maybe two. The Lions, if we lose the Lions, it's another story. If we get lit up by Jared Goff, I, I, I don't really know what I'll do. However, I will say this. I, I'm not going to take the same Geno Smith approach if I get lit up by Jared Goff because they're building quite a good team over there. They got Jameson Williams, dude's a speedster. They got um, Amon Ross St. Brown, I think. I, I think that's the right St. Brown. They got Jared Goff. They got Panay Sewell. On the defensive side, they got some players. I think the Lions are slow, are actually doing the rebuild properly, and they're building something over there. I just don't think it's done yet, and we might lose to them. I'll be mad if we lose to them because of the Lions, but hey, they're 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 doing their jobs correctly. All right, week twelve. Let's say best case scenario, we are eight and four at week twelve, heading in heading to Dallas, this is the place that Jerry Jones built. A place that no Giants fan ever wants to be whenever they're playing Dallas. We always seem to lose against them. We're 8 and 5. Washington, Eagles, Washington, 
I think we could win those games against Washington because for some reason Jones always lights up Washington. I don't know why. I don't know how or why, but Jones always lights up Washington. And the only game we Jones has lost to Washington is a game where we got messed up. Where it really wasn't his loss. It was, it was the Giants' loss. The Giants' loss. Darius Slayton and the rest lost us that game. Because Dexter Lawrence didn't jump. Anyway, moving on. Say we beat the Washington twice. We are 10-5. and five. Let's say we lose to the Eagles. We lose the Eagles. We're 10-6. and six. Lose to the Vikings. Lose to the Colts. Lose to the Eagles again. I see us being a 10-7 and seven team if we play our best against teams that we should beat. However, in, in a common theme in New York, sometimes, look at the camera, look at the camera, we don't, sorry, camera cut there, we don't play our best. I, I don't know what the heck just happened with my camera. My camera just cut me off four times, just like blank. Anyway, like I said, we don't play our best at all. Sometimes we could go four. We could go four and thirteen, for all I know. I I just don't even know. Honestly, I I don't. I, I'm not gonna get my hopes up that high. I'm all I'm saying is, we have a good. We have an easy enough schedule where if we win the games, we should. We should win. We have a chance to win. We we should ha we should do well this year. We could be a wild card team. And I think in that case, I think they would keep Jones if we won made it to the wild card. Except that we're the Giants and we find a way to not win the games we're supposed to. Anyway, New York. Okay, I believe that's going to wrap it up for the Giants overtime episode. I, I did my intro. I don't need to do a big plug outro. All I'm going to say is the Yankees extra innings episode is going to be brutal and cynical. So be ready for that because I have a lot to say about how the Yankees are playing right now. I'll see you next time. Bye.